Hello, welcome to Scrapbooking Station. In this video, I've got two structures that are real similar. So I'm going to do it in one video. The first is going to be a fold back gate, and then the second is going to be a stage card. So I'm going to put the camera over my shoulder and we'll get started. The first few samples in this video are going to be the fold back gate, and this finished one, the first one is going to be 4x6 finished. And so what I need is a piece of cardstock that is 12 inches across and 6 inches high. And all I'm going to do is score it 2 and 4 inches from both sides. And that's just an easier way to approach it for all these cards. Um, if you want to do it the other way, you score it 2, 4, 8, and 10. So I'm just going to give it a score at 2, and at 4. And notice I'm using a really pretty kind of patterned cardstock. It's probably lightweight, so I think it's about probably 90 pounds cardstock so it's not going to be as sturdy as some of your cards but I think the scenery is going to kind of make up for that. Okay, Now you just want to give everything a good crease and so it's going to come this way and then fold back and I'll be back with that piece and we'll take a look at how we're going to embellish. So this comes together like so and then when the user gets it they'll open it up and then it is displayed. So really pretty when this comes together, because it's a one kind of thing seen, it is kind of broken in here, so I'm probably going to put a focal that's going to cover across. I'm going to be using some dazzles, so I'm going to add some cactus and a sentiment, and so let me back these, get some of them on here, and then I'll be back with almost finished piece. So at this point I've added my dazzles and the sentiment, so the sentiment is on the front, and because this card opens like so, it's also on the inside, so I've got looking sharp which is kind of a play on the cactus. So I've backed the dazzles. Dazzles come from Paper Wishes, as does all the patterned paper. And then on the inside, I just created a window with a flower box that's going to hold my cactus up. So when it displays, really pretty, and you're going to see photos of that. And when it closes, you could stick it under a book. Of course, when it, once it goes in the envelope in the mail, it'll be fine. But I created a belly band also. So more dazzles and more patterned papers. Pa patterned paper comes from Paper Wishes. It just slides on the same as you would with any gate. So all the same little techniques and embellishments that you do for gate folds, uh, you could do for this fold back gate as well. So it's going to slide on like this. And actually I left it so it can slide back behind the whole sentiment. Or actually I kind of like it sliding over the tag kind of element and then under the cactus so it looks something like that. So that's really nice. Pattern paper comes from uh, the craft store Michaels and it's a 12 by 12 sheet and so what I had left of course was a 6 by 12 and I just wanted to show this piece so this was the kind of the top half of that pattern paper I used for my base card so exactly same same scored at 2 and 4 from both sides and it's just embellished with more craft paper and what I love kind of about it about this size is it's great for your little books. So remember your little book pages. They're about five and three quarters by four and a quarter. So you do have to do some trimming on the width for this size. Okay, what I want to do now is change the orientation and go like this. Now I don't have 18 inch cardstock, so we're gonna play with that a little bit. I'll be back. Okay, in the second project, so now I want a 4x6 finish, but I want it going the other way. And so this is more cardstock from Michaels, and it's got a pattern, and as long as I've got to connect, because you're going to have to connect something, because what you need is 18 inches of cardstock for your base card. I went with two different patterns. I've also, well first off, this is started out as a 12x4. And so what you want to do is score at 3 and 9, or 3 inches from both sides. And that's going to give you 6 inch center, or 6 by 4 inch center. And that's what I have here. And that came along with a punch, because again, as long as I'm connecting, I want to make things pretty. So this is a scallop punch from Stampin' Up! And so I've got that. And now for the outside, what you need really is your 3 inch uh, fold backs. So they're going to be like this, but because it's got to connect to this other base piece, it needs to be a little bit longer. So I just cut them uh, four by four. 
So I've got two 4 by 4 squares. And when I attach it, I'm going to want the scallop edge on the outside. And so I'm going to go like this and against a grid or something, or actually just use the base of my card. I'm going to put glue back behind this scallop and then position it like so on either side. Um, I'm going to finish up with the rest of the embellishments and then we'll take a look at this finished piece. So again, this is folded back on itself, and we just want to attach behind the scallops. And so this way, when it opens, it's going to be the same reveal. The great thing about using pattern cardstock is you really don't need much more. So kind of just use a little bit of leftovers and some stamping. And this is a sympathy card, so I just stamped the inside. And that is really pretty. You can probably see the ends, but I'll take photos of all that. I did find the cover for this one. This is Blue Blooms and again it comes from Michaels and when my daughter comes to town what we typically do is share a pad and you can find them on sale almost always for five dollars so between us we get 48 different patterns of cardstock for five dollars which is ten cents a sheet which is pretty good. Out of this uh, couple sheets I can make two, four, lots of cards. Anyway so the formula for the fold back gate is pretty much three times your width and then the two outside pieces just get folded back on themselves. Uh, before I leave this, it's also cool, uh, what about a shape? So the shape requirement is that it be uh, symmetrical along the y-axis or along the vertical axis. So if you were to fold it in half like this, it is going to be the same. And so this is going to come like this, and we're going to create three hearts. You don't have to worry about the points because you're going to have three points hitting ground, and so it'll stand up really nicely. What you do need to consider is when you're putting this together, let me just center along this dark line. You want to pick a point in here, and I've already scored it, that gives you enough area so that when you attach the second piece to it, and I'm going to want the heart in front, so I'm going to attach it like so, making sure these are square, and then I'm going to just actually come back with uh, the finished three pieces tied together so we can take another look. Okay, I wanted to show that last photo because what I've done is on that center heart where I scored, I folded those toward the front and then I added my two half heart pieces and left a weight on it. So on the one side you see where there was the glue. So you just want glue on that fold back piece on the back. Then place your heart and then put something heavy on it to let it set. Now I did two hearts. This one actually does kind of fit behind the larger one. And so in any gate fold, of course, what you want to stay on this side, you want to make sure you only have glue here. And in this case, since I want that to slide in between, I actually have glue around here, not interfering with that heart sliding under. But it could just as easily fit back behind here, so you wouldn't have to worry about it. Anyway, opens up, and this is a double-sided, it's called Topsy Turvy cardstock from Create and Craft. And that's the way that turns out. So it's a happy birthday with love, and displays really nicely. So I'll take photographs of that. Now I think we're ready to move into the other uh, structure I have, which is called a stage. So I'll be back. For this first stage card, uh, the finished card is going to be a little bit smaller, so I'm going to make a five and a half inch wide by four and a quarter inch tall finished card. And so what I want to start with is a four and a quarter inch tall by eight inch piece of cardstock. Major difference is, even though structurally we pretty much create it the same way, with two scores on each side uh, the same. But they don't have to meet back into the middle, so you actually end up using significantly less cardstock. And then we're going to add a band across somewhere across the card to kind of hold it together and stage it when it's up. And we're going to see more of that as I finish up. So for this card to finish out the way I want it to, I'm going to score it one and a quarter, two and a half from both sides. Then you want to go ahead and decorate it. This time I'm using some stamping up materials, so I've got River Rock cardstock, and then this is Western Sky Pattern Papers. And then I've got a cutting die that I got from uh, via eBay from China, and so it's kind of a Western motif as well. So all I did was go ahead and panel it, and this now we can look a little bit closer about how this is going to end up actually getting sent. So when it's sent, it's going to fit into the envelope this way. So when you're um, decorating, 
if you want to raise things up, you don't want to put too much into this side of your uh, focus panel because this is going to overlap like this and if it gets too chunky it's really not going to fold very flat. The other thing is is that tab. So we're going to need a tab that's going to be the full length of the card. In this case it's five and a half inches. I just used another die cut. And so what I'm going to do, and you could put this really anywhere. Um, you could put it here, you could put two. You could actually have one here and one here and make it look like a real stage. But when you attach it you want to make sure it's real secure because this takes actually a lot of stress. So when I attach it, I'm going to bring it up about half an inch. So it's going to come across and then I'm going to attach it just to the, in this section here, half inch. And then just on this outside tab, half inch. So I'm going to use liquid glue because I use liquid glue all over the place. So you kind of want the same strength of adhesive. And then I'll be back to take a look at how this is going to display. And this is how the first card finished out and one and a quarter inches is actually quite deep. So I want to introduce one more thing and that's since this is a swing structure anyway, meaning that you know you've got this depth but it go ahead and it melts flat. I'm going to add a little rectangle and this little rectangle is going to hold another piece of the puzzle. Now this is one and a quarter inches. I made this rectangle half an inch wide and long enough to hold another sentiment. So when I stick this down here, and if I were to do it again, I wouldn't have put this boot in until I was done. I'm going to attach it to the back of my card, and then this side. As, as this swings, that's going to swing flat also. And then I'm just going to put this piece like this. So I'm going to have like three layers on here, and that's going to go like that. Anyway, I am finished with this card, so I'm just going to take pictures of that finished piece, and I want to do another one, because I want to talk about a couple other things. And so I've already decorated this, and instead of using a straight tab, all I did was take a long oval die and cut two sections like this to kind of make a swag. And so I've got birthday on there. And the other thing I want to talk about, since these don't meet in the middle, if you want to put things into the center, you can. And so I've added a couple horseshoes. Now I've got my boot and hat again. These are all the same pattern papers, all the same die cuts. I've added another birth happy birthday pennant. Because what I've got is kind of the rectangle. It's not really the rectangle because it started out as a swag. But I still want half an inch deep. I'm not going to bring it all the way across the back. So this is enough to go ahead and attach to the back of my card the back of my card and again I'm going to attach it to this side and then secure down these backs. Then I'm going to add my boots. So I'm going to do that and leave photos and I've got one more project. So this last project is also going to be a stage. I had to turn the overhead light on because this is a piece of uh, Magic Mary Adorable Scorable. So it's got to shine all over. But instead of kind of predetermining to fit an envelope, I'm going to let the pattern lead where these scores are going to be. I'm also going to thin it up a little bit. I don't want it one and a quarter inches. And the other thing about this stage is that it doesn't need to be, it needs to be the same on both sides, but both measurements don't need to be the same. So I'm actually going to score each end at one and a quarter and then three more quarter and a third three quarter inches more which is going to give me two inches so I'm going to have one and a quarter and two inches scored from both sides again not making it the same and I've actually already finished this card and it's kind of just taking advantage of the pattern on the card stock and so this time instead of just putting a little small swing well first off I've got the tab that's going across I've added some die cuts and I've got a piece that goes all the way across the back and it's just attached on either side and so I measured the width of this and then of course it's going to mail flat this way and it's the display again it's not that deep but look at all that dimension anyway stage cards are really fun I mean they're kind of weird when you mail them because when the user gets them or the recipient gets them they're going to pull them out like this and then kind of have to know to shift it but really pretty uh, when you make them and a lot of fun to make as well Anyway, I hope you took something with you you can use uh, in your own card making, and I thank you for watching.